Hello, thank you so much for joining from Russia. Privyat. <laughs> yeah, so. Thanks, John. John, for joining. Thank you, Alona, for joining us. <laughs> Good morning, Aziz. Good morning, Eva. Good morning. And one minute. And I see that we are already live. We are already live. Hello, everyone. Hello, our participants on our pages, on the Facebook, and our participants here. Welcome to the Business Speaking Hour monthly event for leaders and entrepreneurs. We are the World Leader Summit at your service, and we are to help you improve your business communication skills. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Evgenia Sazonova. I am a core team member of the World Leader Summit. I'm entrepreneur in educational field, founder of Leadership Academy, uh, business coach uh, and mentor. And I'm very happy to be your host today. Uh, so our agenda for today, uh, we stay together for one hour. And uh, we have two main sections. The first section is uh, we have with the speaker. We promised you in the last hour meeting uh, that every month we will invite to our event greatest experts from all around the world. And today we have an amazing, amazing guest. But please wait a bit. I will introduce him a bit later in a couple of minutes. The second session, we have a workshop and networking session. A session where every one of you, our participants, will have a one-minute presentation to tell us about you and your business or your activity. And uh, some of you, uh, who is more bold, <laughs> have a chance to pitch to pitch own business and get feedback from our guests. So uh, I will take a two minutes to introduce the organizer, World Leader Summit. We are the fastest growing international business ecosystem with a 90 plus countries network uh, for entrepreneurial minds. Our network has more than uh, 30,000 companies from all around the world. And the mission of World Leader Summit is to foster entrepreneurship globally through the five pillars of WLS, uh, mentoring, networking, education, funding, and incubation. And World Leader Summit's focus area is raising the next generation of entrepreneurs. And for now, we are doing this already with the, our ambassadors from 29 countries. And we are open to new people who has a desire to grow together with us. Uh, finally, I'm honored to introduce our incredible guest, and I'm really happy that uh, we convinced him to share with us his knowledge. Uh, our guest is Arijit Patacharya. Arijit uh, is an angel investor, serial entrepreneur, financial advisor, TEDx speaker, a finally founder of the World Leader Summit and uh, my great friend who started the first business at 17 years old and uh, just ex exceptional man who never give up and uh, all his life aimed to make a better world. Arijit will share with us, uh, with all of you, uh, how to pitch a business idea. And if you want to uh, give feedback about your pitching of your idea, you will have a chance after his presentation. So Arijit, the floor is yours. Happy to see you here. Thank you, thank you so much, Eve, and uh, welcome to World Leader Summit Business Meetup, guys. I'm really happy and uh, honored to see all the participants. I think we have uh, people from Russia, India, and Ireland, and uh, of course, it will be my pleasure to share whatever small and big knowledge I've gathered so far. And uh, I'll be asking our Indian friends to kindly keep their uh, microphone in a mute mode because any international event doesn't happen with the noise. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, before I start, let me give you a small bit of understanding about my mother language. And uh, when I start, you will know that why all these kind of 
word jurgens i play with so i'm coming from a city called calcutta which is uh, in the eastern part of india a long time back calcutta used to be the capital of india a long time back i mean during the british periods we converted before that our our capital to delhi but when i grew up my mother tongue used to be bengali and uh, in my town uh, the usual common language to speak is multiple if you look at india we have more than 50 plus language which is so very different from state to state so defining a indian language if you are asking is very difficult so when i was growing up i thought that why don't i cope up with english and when i'm coping up with english i would be able to uh, manage all those kind of language barriers so i started creating my own actual english dictionary so pardon me if i'm going to bore you for next one hour can i please share my screen Okay, while while Eve is giving me the sharing permission, let me continue uh, my speech. So, when you think of uh, starting your own entrepreneurial journey, what do you think that who is this entrepreneur? Uh, who are entrepreneurs basically? And uh, probably a couple of people, a couple of you have asked me uh, personally, what is the difference between a businessman and an entrepreneur? Is there a difference? I mean, dictionary wise, probably both are same. Well, honestly speaking, no. In my understanding, when you are a businessman, you are able to make money, and your passion is mainly uh, making money and uh, probably increasing the whole infrastructure. And that's a very noble thing. But when you look at the entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs usually run for passion. They start their business out of passion, out of love. They sometimes don't care. whether they really really need to make money or sometimes if at all they are not making money probably they will continue the journey and yes this is a journey so when you talk about pitching your business entrepreneurship is actually a journey riding on the top of a tiger and when i mention tiger it's not a joke i believe that all of you have tried horse riding uh well yes it's it's bit of tricky you need to learn how to control the horse but it's not going to eat you but when you started entrepreneurial journey if you stop your business kills you so when you ride this tiger is your business and you need to learn a art how to feed it if you overfeed it it will become slow if you underfeed it if you don't feed it properly it will become hungry it may happen that it will bite you it will throw you from its back and start killing you so in any business in any venture when you look at the structure you need to eat as well as you need to feed so your feeding material is the money that you are pumping into your venture and when we talk about pitching when your business in front of investors the reason is you need that money that sweet money honey stuff okay now when we when we think about uh, controlling money when we think about uh, understanding those kind of english jargons when i talk about okay fine i'm going to bore you well this is what i mean i'm going to bore you so the full form of bore is beginning of free engineered entrepreneurship now why i added engineering with entrepreneurship and why it is re engineered when you are an entrepreneur your business model must be unique completely unique you must be solving a real life problem it's not about your idea it's about your business how you're doing it and for that you need couple of different things usually i prefer to start small now people may feel that uh start small well um fine but couple of people start very big again english terms small for me smart manageable 
adjustable logical which can go towards large so when you are starting something which is pretty bit of small never ever think about the size think about the smartness how you have started what is your marketing strategy is your business manageable by you and your team is it adjustable is it dynamic with due course of time probably covid hit a lot of business a lot of people's business died a couple of business flourished a lot of people changed their business dynamics so are you that dynamic business are you the kind of business which is logical enough to understand okay fine there are few bit of people in my company who is not at all doing fine they are not at all doing perfect but yeah as a ceo it is my responsibility to fire some people but when you think the same thing as a founder you will see that as a founder you are attached with those people sometimes you can't fire them so it's not very easy to adapt adjust become dynamic and think smart it's easy to say hard to define i'm going to give you a small rundown whatever i have done um, as a as a angel in last couple of decades in around 36 countries i'm going to show you few of the companies which i invested or started as a co-founder these are the few of the organizations uh, for time's sake i'm going to skip all of them but probably in next future i'm going to talk each and every venture that i have started and invested before we go jump into how to create your pitch deck i'm going to ask you a very simple question um any one of you from the audience can give me that answer what do you need to start your venture what is the one single key element that is needed to start your own venture any one of you can answer please i would I like to say may i say uh, yeah please okay i would like to say like passion and idea it's not it's not one but you need two like you got you got to believe in what you what you have in mind and you have an you have to have an idea okay. without it an idea one point anyone else i can see australia joined probably anyone else you want to add value if not i'll give you the answer well yes point taken you need to have a passion you need to have an idea but sorry my friends ideas are great thing to put that paper scrap it like this throw into a trash can i'll tell you the reason anyone can have idea anyone i can have an idea that i'll go to mars and i can start building a rocket ship but until unless i have a business model and the most important point customer i can't start my business so the most valuable important term person key element is your customer to start your business you need a customer your idea can be enhanced your idea can be changed you can probably raise money it doesn't matter everything can fall in into a particular dimension if you have your first customer in line so let us start with who is your first customer until unless you understand your market you cannot create your pitch deck it's not that easy okay you can say that google says that i have uh, this market which is billion dollars and i'm going to tap in 50% of it it doesn't happen like this you need to segregate and understand who is your segregated segmented group of people now i usually ask people to probably create a small minimum viable product it can be a solution it can be a product it can be anything whatever it is it is your own business but find someone who can believe in you when you have that someone in your bench it can be your co-founder it can be your co-developer i'll give you a small story uh in a different part of uh, my country there used to be um one one uh, person who was not very uh, prudent into um 
understanding consumer base. Uh, he used to create liti choka. Liti is a, a very simple kind of food, which is nearby Bihar area into my country. And uh, he used to think that if I start a small stall, people will come and they will buy my uh, fast food. Imagine it as a fast food joint. And he started that. And when he started, a couple of people came, they started eating. And then he realized one day he is not getting any kind of repeat customer. Whoever is coming, they are just buying it, going away. No one is coming back. He is getting new and new faces every day, but his sales is not increasing. So he was just become clueless. He asked me that, sir, I'm a very small time shop owner. What to do? I don't know. I don't understand why this is happening. I can't scale it up. I'm just becoming a normal stall owner, but I want to be an entrepreneur like you. I told him, okay, fine. How are you different? There are other, other sellers like you. So what's the big deal? He was a bit of clueless. He said, my tastes are different. I said, how do you define it? I mean, who is going to define that your taste is different? Clueless again. Okay, fine. So then how I am different? I said, okay, fine. Let's find out in your locality, how many hygienic litty sellers are there? He said, probably none. I said, can you become that? Can you sell your fast food in a more hygienic way than others? Can you package it in a smooth way, in a sophisticated way, and then start giving it door to door instead of starting a stall? He started doing it. And now he got a complete pipeline where he can deliver the same good old snacks door to door with hygienic model, with subscriptions, and their customer, he started asking question, how can we improve? Do you feel that we should improve a little bit of sour? Do you feel that we should improve a little bit of into our uh, uh, probably size? Do you feel that it is worth about your money? He started getting all those kind of feedback. And when he started getting those feedback, sometimes this was just a normal example, which is very simple anywhere in the world, probably you can find it in Africa, probably you'll find it in anywhere in the world. It's small town shop owners, they do such kind of activities. But one of them come up with this kind of idea, okay, I'm not going to stick myself into a small store. I'm going to be scaling up my venture, but I don't know how. So that I don't know how question you should ask to yourself, how you can do it. I'm a kind of person who can probably give you small bit of structure how to do it, but you yourself need to do it, right? Now, if I move to our uh, segment where you got your consumer base and you are probably thinking of him or her as a co-developer, can we shift to a little bit of another segment where probably we can understand how to start, run, a proper entrepreneurial organization. And then when I give you those information, I'll be taking you towards a journey where you can raise capital and how you can raise capital. What are the key basic 10 pointer, 10 sliders you should create into your pitch deck? It works for you? Yes, no? Yes, Arijit. <laughs> Super. Okay, so um, of course, as I was saying that, are you solving any kind of problem or not? If you are doing that, create a great team. Now, when I talk about team, your employees are not your team. Sorry for the statement. A um, lot of entrepreneurs uh, usually write to me that I have got a 10 people company, I have got 50 people company, I have got probably five people company. So I ask them a very simple question. That, Do you have a team or are they your employees they are a bit of confused they usually ask me that what's the difference between a team and a employee okay let me define it when you have people on board on a payroll and they are doing things with you they're doing things for two to three different reasons one reason initially when they join they are doing it for money of course people need money and they'll be doing it for money in due course of time they started loving your own vision. So they are becoming your loyal employees. 
But when the time comes, which is a bad time, are they going to stay with you without money? Are they going to continue their life with you so that both of you can make it positive, vibrant, and make it bigger? I can give you a number of examples like this. Number of unicorns who had bad times, but their team never ever left them. And that's the reason they are unicorn. And that's the reason they are called as a great team. So in a team, I usually use a couple of metaphor as per Eve. I usually use it as a as animals, I call it as animal instinct. You have someone on board who is acting as rhino. Okay, let me define it. Rhino is a kind of animal, if you shoot bullet, you cannot kill it easily. So you need a person to control and manage your consumer base who can take almost anything from the customers, anything. Good things, bad things, anything. You need someone in your team like this not paid employees, a person who is passionate as good as you. It can be you, it can be your co-founder, doesn't matter, but you need this. You need someone who can extract knowledge to wisdom. Swan is a kind of animal who can actually extract it properly. Now, um, if I look at another animal instinct, that's your tiger, it can be you, yourself, it can be the CEO of the organization who is who is actually roaring like moving fast and then telling people that please come and follow me please buy us please take our solution is sleepless he's is with full of energy is like a king so you need that kind of person in your team you need a person who can actually find out where is the money that's the owl instinct I'll tell you the reason why owl never ever find out the prey without without understanding where it is hidden. If you look at the way they work, they always have almost 180 degrees movement of its head. That means your teammate should have all these kind of visibility functions. He should be able to see almost everywhere where it is happening where, and then find out in the dark whether there is gold hidden into it or not. Gold means your money and the darkness is your market. So a person who can actually find out money within the large market. Are your team dynamic? Snake got a dynamic element and it can actually move its skin and become pretty new. So do you have that kind of element into your team or not? Do you have a person who is wise enough, who can remember anything who is a little bit of old, probably a bit of slow, don't want to become a public face, but he's happy to manage all your accounts, he's happy to manage all your banking systems. That's one of the most vital key elements into your team. You may think that why I'm talking about all these kind of team elements when I'm going to take care of creating a pitch deck. Well, if you ask any investor, anyone, they will tell you this answer. Do you have a perfect team? Usually investment, usually investment don't happen only on business. Investment mainly happens with investment. Again, I'm repeating, only happens with team. Investors always bang on the team. There are others like you. You are not only the unique person probably in the world. In the planet, you don't know who is doing where. It's not, it's not possible for anyone to tell you that if I have started a gaming business in India, the same business is being done by somebody else probably in, in Siberia or not. I can't say whether it is happening in China or not. It's not easy, right? But as an investor, it is pretty easy to judge the team first. Their managerial background, their passion, their IQ level, how they look at the market, how they understand the market, and then what is their execution power? Do they have a past experience? Sometimes I don't prefer taking a lot of corporate people, bunch of corporate people who started their new journey as a, as a next investment destination of my own money. Because sometimes when you're coming from corporate background, you have a lot of blockage in brain. You sometimes don't see things which 
a normal, very simple student can see, who don't have all those kind of corporate jargons in their brain. So if it is a mixed mode kind of team, that's one of the best. Okay. Uh, next vital point to understand the PR. You need to, need to, need to, need to, need to, must have a great PR team who can actually talk about your brand and brand logo, website name, domain structure. It's a complete different ball game. So if you need, I can always take another workshop. This is not today's workshop. Okay, as, as my guru said, my guru is Steve Jobs, stay hungry always. So I'll, I'll take it to that next level, talking about how to raise capital and please don't rush. Raising capital cannot happen within, cannot happen like this, okay? You're asking that, okay, you are an angel investor. This is my team, this is my business. I'm making money, I need money and give me money in next two weeks. Brother and sisters, and sisters of my brothers, it doesn't happen like this. Please, we usually understand a venture. I personally understand the people in next three months, a minimum benchmark for me. I, I shouldn't talk about others. Some VC funds may take more time. So if you feel you need money now, please don't apply to angel investors. Please find some other, other people. A proper angel investor will always think before he puts his money, if he's a proper one. And he understand that this is his money, which is rolling in the market. If he is investing in 10 different business, he will probably get success from three to four. And success means success. And probably he will, he will be uh, getting one unicorn out of the 10 investment that he did. Exceptions are there, but that's the usual case. Okay, so when you are raising capital, I have uh, very specific points. Um, I hate reading from PPT, so I'll go impromptu. You can take a snapshot. This is a video. You can probably save it from Facebook for future use. Okay, are your venture tapping 10% of your target market? Please don't understand this is not the total market. This is your target market. If you are targeting 1,000 people, can you cater 10% of them? If yes, then I'll continue. What is your target customer group? And what are the countries that you feel that you can run your venture? Before you start your venture, you need to think beyond your own country. I'm so sorry about this statement because uh, when you're scaling up and you're looking for money, there are very different stages of fundraising, seed capital, growth capital, working capital. There are a couple of other things. Uh, I'm not going to those kind of financial uh, terms, but yes, um, if you have started your business and you're looking for raising money, well, to be very honest, when you have raised your first amount of money, you're looking for second round, you need to have a global uh, vision. So it is always recommendable before you raise money, you must have a global vision. You must have a business plan which can cater at least 10 to 12 different kind of uh, market segment. Well, uh, the next vital question is, uh, are you making money? Are you profitable? You may say, sir, we have just started our venture. It's a beautiful idea. We are executing out of passion. We are not profitable. No problem. If you're not profitable, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Are you making money? Now, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, student startups, IEST startups, they say that I have got an app in the app store. I have got 10,000 downloads. I have got a million download. Wow, kudos, you have done awesome. How many of them are paying me? Answer is zero, none. Great. How will you make money then? You are looking for money from an investor. No problem on that. But how will you give my money back? It's not a charity that people are doing. They need their money back. Right. So when you have started one app based venture and that app based venture is actually um, making a little bit of probably uh, vibration in the market, people are happy. But are you making money from there? If not now, do you have a process which can actually generate money? If yes, of course, we can talk. So please remember, if you're pitching before you pitch, don't show this number until you're sure that from that number, you can generate at least 
few bit of customers. Customers are not free, they are users. So if you have 10,000 downloads, that's your user, that's not your customer. Whoever is paying, that's your customer. It can be one, doesn't matter. You don't make money, no problem. But in future, you are going to make money. Show us the path. Okay, be a good CEO. Again, I'll go with my kind of dictionary. Be a great cash extraction officer. Forget about chief executive officer. You are a startup. You don't need to be a chief executive officer, but you need to understand, can you extract cash from the market? Uh, many of you usually ask, uh, how do I evaluate my company? What is valuation? Well, it's a pretty simple formula. Pre-money valuation plus the investment amount becomes your post-money valuation. So it may happen that you started your venture maybe with 10,000 ruble, maybe $1,000, maybe, uh, uh, maybe 10,000 rupees. It doesn't matter. But you created something which is awesome. You made the probably the world come to you. Okay. And then you got a lot of traction. Your PR is really high. So your valuation automatically will become a little bit of higher level. Not only that, there are a lot of other factors. And uh, I'm going to give you various different factors. Example, um, if you are a profitable company, they have a steady growth. It's like a PE multiple. If you're a loss making company, fluctuating profit is PS multiple. If you really want to know all these kind of terms, I can I can uh, go into details, but I think we'll go for a workshop for the same. This is just a normal usual conversation. Uh, there are other methods like, as I was saying, subscribers, number of users, discounted cash flow. Um, so like uh, there are backward method as well. So I, I shouldn't uh, talk a lot about all these things because these are a little bit of tricky. Uh, and that's the reason I usually prefer that in your team, you must have someone who understand finance. If you don't have someone who understand finance, it's gonna be really, really difficult for you to manage all those money as well. Trust me, believe me. If you get $1 million now, I mean now, you can't manage it. Trust me, you just can't manage it. You will feel that, okay, fine, let me let me go to, uh, let me go to Bora Bora Island and then maybe enjoy my life over there for next 10, 12 days, then I'll think, and I'll be burning my investors' money. It doesn't happen like this, okay? Managing finance is a science. It's not an art. And that's one of the biggest signs. And that's how you can manage money and make money. And sometimes, trust me, a lot of startups don't understand that the money is there inside their business. Probably they're trying to raise capital without any kind of reason. Anyway, when do we need fund? Well, sounds funny, but yeah. When you don't need money, raise capital on that particular time. Raise money before you need it. Why? When you start raising money, it will take at least six to nine months before both of you do all the due diligence. You get the cash in your bank. Example, you started pitching. You don't know where to go. Probably World Leader Summit is helping you to pitch in front of the investors. You've done your, your pitching and then you are continuously in touch with the investment pool and a couple of more investors, somebody will say yes to you, but that process will take, yes, process may take a month. That may process may take two months. If you are, if you are raising capital from, uh, not from your country, probably some, some foreign investor is investing into your company, there are legal terms, there are segments, there are bankings, there are, lot of different factors which may take six months to nine months so it's always good to have a backup put that into your brain i'm not gonna raise fund in next nine months can i sustain if yes start the journey then you'll become successful probably within next two to three months but keep that in mind multiple smaller financing rounds are great idea example you need uh, half a million dollar and you are raising it step by step. Like I'll achieve in next two months, I'll achieve this. For that, I need X amount of money. I'll be achieving something else in next another two months. For that, I need X plus 20. So segregate your need of finance. You will be obliged to see 
that investors are actually appreciating it. And they will say, awesome, you understand how to manage our funds. So here is the check. And that's one of the beautiful way that you can probably manage your funding. Okay, so there are a lot of things I like, like this is, this is a little bit of tricky in, uh, in uh, raising funds. I'm going to skip a lot of this because I can see a lot of uh, probably pre-seed or probably very idea stage people are here. So I'll be shifting it to the recommended slide deck because I can see that I already took around um, I think 30 minutes, which is uh, my ending time in next 10 minutes. So uh, if you need to really understand uh, what are the other things that you need to understand and know, I'll be more than happy to explain all those previous uh, management terms, which I didn't explain. Uh, maybe we'll go for another very deep level of workshop, which we have in World Leader Summit. So we have a complete... Uh, hackathon, we call it as a hackathon, which is a 48 hours hackathon. Step by step, we teach people how to create a proper structure from your idea, which we call as an MVP. And that from MVP, how you can create a normal business deck. And from a business deck, how you can convert that into a pitch deck. Both are different. Business deck is different. Pitch deck is different. Okay. And then how you can pitch in front of the investor. There comes our leadership academy and public speaking skills where we are teaching people how to do that within probably three minutes and uh, elevator pitch which usually happens in a couple of uh, few seconds it's a tricky but yeah people can do that uh, so the recommended slide deck for you the first slide you may talk about uh, summary the call to action what you do what you want the second thing the problem that you usually face please for god's sake don't put Google data into your problem statement. We don't need to know that, please. Like I am jury in, I don't know so many, so many business plan competition. I'm sorry to say in India, you guys are actually showing people like us, you guys are showing that what is the problem in the world and then how this problem is being taken care of by, by some researchers. Man, we don't need that. We are not professors with due respect to the professors. We don't need that. I can find it in Google. I need what is the problem that you are solving, okay? Then your underlying magic. Do you have a technology? Do you have a patented product? Do you have a team? Do you have something which is completely unique, which probably almost no one is doing? You may think that why Arijit is talking about almost no one is doing. Well, as per my understanding, the English term research doesn't mean search. It means research, meaning somebody already searched about it, right? So when you're talking about research, you are searching it again. So nothing is new in the world, right? I can go on with timelines and other things, but this is not this is not, not the not the workshop. But yeah, when you're doing such kind of activities, how you are unique than others? It can be a business model, it can be your team, it can be your product. It can be something else, but you need to find out that something else and put that into the slide, which is the most important point. And the second vital point, which is most important, which I was shouting for the last couple of minutes is your team. Do you have a marketing and sales? Do you have a competition? If you have competition, that's good. Are you a newcomer in the market and you're making a statement, sir, no one have ever done this in this world. Okay. Great, but why? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm a genius. That's the reason I, I started this. Well, great. If you're a genius, awesome. If not, if not, and you're making this statement that, well, uh, I don't have any competition, then I fear, my dear. If you don't have a competition, you need to create the market. And to create the market, you need a lot of money. So the ask of your money going to be more higher than others so it is good to have competitors if you have that they are also educating the market please understand your competitors are not your competitors they are actually your friends they are also educating the market it is your responsibility how to become unique from all those kind of competitions eighth point i was shouting for a couple of minutes i forgot maybe 20 minutes 
team, 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 and team. Well, yes, to run a successful business, you need to bang on that team. It can be those metaphor animals. It can be probably two to three guys, doesn't matter, but should have all these qualities. Do you have ego? People will say that, wow, you started your business, that's fine, but you're not earning anything and you become real angry. I'm not earning, I'm an entrepreneur. Well, hold on, kick off your ego, please. You know, uh, kindly, it doesn't happen. I mean, it doesn't happen like this. People have their own mouth. They will always do the lip movement and appreciate that. If somebody is smiling because you are doing something, that means you are actually making others happy. That means, trust me, if you want to trust me, you are successful. People laughed when I started a game studio in 1998. We used to have Windows 95 as an operating system. There was no internet in India. A lot of people didn't saw PC in India. And I was talking about creating a gaming studio in India. People got a shock and they started laughing at me. And now I have big smile in my face. Okay. So trust me, if people are laughing at you, don't get angry. It's good. You're making others smile. It's good. Okay. You're doing good. Okay. Coming back to our ninth point, projections and milestones. This is sometimes required in your initial pitch deck. Sometimes probably it is not required. Sometimes you can maybe say that, you know what, we are going to achieve this number. We are, we are now in this number. Maybe we are making five. We are going to make probably 50 in next uh, one year, maybe next two years. And to achieve that 50, we can do it all alone. But if I am doing it all alone, we will be taking maybe uh, next uh, three years. But if you, as an investor, come on board with your money as your network, well, I prefer when I do any such kind of activities, I prefer I come with my network, my knowledge and my money. I never ever come with only my money. Okay, it doesn't make any sense to me. If I am yes, then I'm yes with totally me. Okay, not as a sleeping partner. I don't act as a sleeping partner. I don't know about others, but I don't. Okay, so uh, this point, your projections and milestones, you may skip a little bit with the details, but at least show the investor what you're going to do in next a year, or probably next two years, maybe probably in next three years. If they ask for the details, please be ready. Send it to them. Okay. That means they are interested. So there are small, small tips. Like you show them some number, you show them that I'm doing this. I can achieve that. For that, I need X amount of money and this is my milestone and then they are interested and then you show them the real thing that you can do and you believe that that you can do sometimes it may happen that these numbers are not achievable we all understand this we all understand all those kind of activities and we appreciate all those kind of activities and when we appreciate that we feel okay fine this guy is saying that maybe he will achieve um, probably 10 million dollars sell but uh, uh, on a safe side, as an investor, I may think that, okay, 50% cannot be achieved, okay? So, but he will achieve maybe next $5 million in next couple of years, which is good. That means this fellow got passion. He is showing it that he is probably achieving few thousand dollars in his existing business. He will do good. He will achieve the same number in next five years. If an investor invests into that venture, it can be achievable in next one and a half years or two years. That's one of the amazing, beautiful business we can see ever as an investor. So what happens? We are interested and we say that, okay, great. Let's make it happen together. And if you really want to trust me, believe me, there are good investors who usually be a part of your journey. It's just like a marriage. It's not like somebody is just giving you money. Please understand this, okay? When you look at any kind of venture, any kind of so-called angels or VCs, there are good people who usually handshake with you and be with you. And they feel that this is your business as well. This is our business as well. When this thing happens, it's just like a kind of marriage. I don't want to comment about perfect or imperfect, time will say, but this is like this. 
The last point is your timeline of your um, achievement. So last but not the least, um, I, can, I can probably show you a very simple analogy, which I usually love. This is uh, a startup growth pathway, which I usually love to show people. When you start your, your life, this is your X curve, this is your Y curve. So that's your lifestyle, which is in the, in the, in the hot pink and black, that's your scalability. Um, so as a starting phase founder, sometimes, sometimes it's not maximum times, sometimes you sacrifice a lot and your lifestyle becomes a little bit of smooth, set very, very structured. You don't show off a lot of things. You don't show off to the world that uh, how good you are, you are doing in your personal life. Then this venture will grow like anything. And when you feel that this is your baby, this is your own venture, you are raising it from, you know, uh, spoon feeding it, it becomes an amazing journey. And this journey uh, become more beautiful when you have probably some mother, some father, uncle, aunt, who is giving protection to this baby. And these uncle, aunts, these mothers, sometimes father are these investors, are these customers who are actually helping this baby to grow, walk, sometimes run. But when you talk about the investment pathways, many times I have seen that after getting the first round of investment, they go a little bit of slow to understand things and then uh, come to the market in a complete uh, uh, faster manner. I'm really happy that people are joining. Um, thank you Eve for making me host, but I can see a lot of people in the waiting room. So let me um, add them. I'm so sorry about this. So guys, uh, startup is not about, honestly speaking, I've been talking a lot about valuation, raising funds. Honestly speaking, startup is not about valuation. Startup is not about getting a lot of PR. Startup is not about getting or buying awards. It's not that. Startup is all about building a product that is 10x better and grows 10x faster than anything else, anything else in the world. So please don't mix your personal life with your business. Your business life is different. Your personal life is different. When you understand this small fine tuning, you will do better in life and raising fund, whatever I was talking about, if you need more information about this, trading slide decks, more details, how will you manage all these kind of financial models, any Excel sheet uh, you want to see, any sample Excel sheet you want to see, I can show you maybe in our next workshop. We have a continuous running workshop. We do it almost monthly and probably next uh, near future, we are going to come up with uh, the pitching sessions. That's our workshop mode that we're doing in World Leader Summit. I'm blessed to have, I was talking about team, right? I'm blessed to have the team who is there with us. I'm really blessed to have Viv. I'm really blessed to have Eve. I'm really blessed to have John, Subroto, all of you guys, of course, Anunna, to have into World Leader Summit team to make World Leader Summit viable. So as I was saying, this is all about riding tiger. This is my credentials. If you really want to get in touch, just Google my name. I'm totally there, usually 22 into uh, six person all in for your question and answers. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Rajit, for your amazing presentation. I am sure and I believe that every, every one of our participants have uh, has a lot of questions and uh, it's, uh, it will uh, take time. Uh, do you remember in uh, at eight, 8 March, on 8 March, on the Women's League, how much uh, particip participants uh, did we have? Do you remember? 5,000 participants, yeah. 5,000 participants. Do you imagine if we have 5,000 right now? I think that you would be tired to uh, give answer to everyone. But uh, dear participants, please put your questions in our chat box. If you have a question to Arjit, now we have a Q&A session. And uh, uh, after that, uh, you can uh, introduce yourself, introduce your business uh, for a, a visit speech, uh, one, two minutes. Yeah, I see uh, that was great. It's a uh, comment from Russia <laughs> to you, Arjit. Thank you. Yeah, 
Uh, and uh, actually, um, I see one question. Uh, you mentioned, Tarijit, that um, business deck, uh, creating business deck and creating pitch deck, it's a uh, uh, different thing. So uh, could you please uh, explain the difference? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll be more than happy to explain that. Well, um, uh, pitch deck sometimes means that, uh, uh, give me a moment, uh, uh, let me make you a host first before yeah, we go in, yeah. because I can see it's very difficult. I took care me. of you. <laughs> uh, please. Yeah. And I see, I see already uh, one of participants want to show on uh, pitch deck. So after the question, you will have a chance. Stanislav Zubov, it's a uh, uh, participant from Russia. And we, uh, by the way, we have uh, a lot of countries now, a lot of participants. We have Russia, we have Australia, we have uh, Turkey, and uh, some of some of them. Uh, you can you can put your country in our chat box. Uh, I really would like to see how much uh, countries now join us. And uh, Arjit, floor is yours. Yeah. Okay. So when I talk about a pitch deck, pitch deck is always about talking about your asking money, talking about your vision, talking about your team, talking about what is the kind of disruption that you are going to make in the world and when we talk about business deck business deck is all about how you're going to make money and manage money how you'll be doing the banking how you'll be making the full structure of your business it shows the full structural diagram of your venture when we talk about uh, a pitch deck it may not show the full structure of your business it will show about all these kind of 10 points which i was mentioning about Business deck is much more larger. It shows the full larger structure of your venture. It can be your probably uh, if you're if you're running a manufacturing unit, it may show your full manufacturing unit infrastructure, not as a blueprint, but your structure, how you are running it, your full team strength, jargons, a lot of different management skills. So business deck um, is a little bit of higher than a pitch deck. I'm trying to make it simple because I think that yeah. we are overshooting yeah. time. Yeah, thank here. you. Because we have a different audience, of course. We aimed on the different stage of uh, entrepreneurship, on the startups, on uh, uh, companies which already have a good income and have a good structure and so on. So, dear participants, of course, we try to make it simple for you. And uh, if, uh, for your information, I'm so sorry, but I think I can see that in Facebook, Somebody wrote from Malaysia. There are comments that is coming up. Uh, people are commenting in the live Facebook as well. So if you want to take questions from there, please go ahead. I don't see any question, but yeah. Yeah, I see comments that uh, it's great session. Excellent. And uh, uh, your big Y capital. Mm, this uh, question, I don't understand, actually. I understand okay, I got a question from uh, Australia. Marco is asking yeah. why mm -hmm. a mentor is important for an entrepreneur. Okay. Let me, let me define uh, why mentors are there and why, why mentorship is important. Uh, Marco, thank you for this question. Well, um, a mentor is not a person who is going to execute things for you, but mentor is a person who is going to show you the path. And uh, that saves a lot of time. If you ask me a one-liner answer, you need a mentor to safeguard your timeline, meaning you may get success in next 10 years, but if you have mentor, maybe a proper mentor, not someone who can do only lip movement, okay? A proper mentor will actually help you to achieve that 10 years goal probably within the next two years. Don't expect that mentor will become your friend. Many a times we misjudge people. We feel that mentoring means he is my friend, no. Mentor is your mentor and he is your guide. When he is acting as a guide, you need to listen to him or her. If you give him the answer, I don't believe you, I don't trust you, I don't want to hear about this, you need to understand this is me. Mentor sometimes feels, okay, that means he or she don't need mentors. Welcome to the reality. He needs a friend. So I'm not going to give him what 
I'm supposed to give. The only solar reason when mentorship happens, maximum times it's rough. If as a mentor, I'm not rough to you, you will never ever become successful. It's not gonna happen. Business world is rough always and it's tough. So if I don't make you tough, you cannot fight. So you need mentor to tell you, you know what? You want to open that door. There is the key. To go to the key, you need to take these steps. How you are going to take the steps? On you. How you pick up that key? On you. Depends on you. And then when you got that key, how you walk towards that door, mentor can guide you. Okay. You want to open the door? Run. You want to open the door? Walk. You want to open the door? Crawl. Now, why these three trunks? Sometimes mentor can see something is coming very fast. So he'll ask you to run. Man, run. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes he see that if you run, it will be too early for the market. Okay. Walk. Take time. Sometimes he feels it's a product. It needs enhancement. So he will ask you to crawl. So mentor is needed for all these small, small purposes. Coaching is different, although. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Coaching usually it's a space uh, free from uh, any advice. Coach, it's a uh, more guide, uh, but without advice. Yes, coach, it's uh, like a partner for effective thinking, mostly. Yeah. I see a lot of, um, actually, I see a lot of questions, and uh, I personally uh, have a question to you. Please. Uh, so, yeah, let's use it. Um, you know what? Uh, what's interesting for me? I know one interesting research, and I mentioned this in uh, World Leader Summit in December when I had a speech. Uh, probably you remember about this. Um, one researcher, Melissa Cardone, uh, questioned the largest angel investors in California, largest um, uh, tech cost angels. And uh, she um, found out, uh, she asked them, what are some key criteria for investing on money? And she got uh, 13 criteria. And the third place was taken uh, by perceived entrepreneurial passion. Of course, it's research. Um, but uh, this research, actually, uh, she made that from uh, uh, 2006 to 2010. So it's a uh, long, long research. So I would ask you, uh, do you pay attention or... Um, do you pay attention to the passion and the energy for taking decision as an angel investor? Have you ever had situation now when a startup, for example, didn't have a uh, like good pitch deck, good uh, business deck, but uh, you took this project? Okay, let me, uh, interesting question. Let me tell you this, uh, if uh, pitch deck doesn't mean that you are just mailing a pitch deck. When you're talking to a person, maybe you got in touch with me in some social media and you are telling me that I have got this passion, I really want to do this and I can achieve this. I don't know you, I'm meeting you in social media. I don't know how you look. I don't know how you smell. I don't know how you smile. I don't know how you react, okay? Believing in you will take time. Pitch deck goes to a human mind that this is the business that they're talking about. If it is about only idea and a person, I personally would love to know that person. So you need to show me in social media that I know you. Now it depends on you, how you're going to do it. If you ping me day in and day out, not gonna happen. If you ping me, hello sir, hi sir, then nothing happens, no talks, it's not gonna happen. If you tell me that I am the smartest kid in the block and I'm going to crack this, I can't believe you because I don't know you. So you need to find out a way to show me why I should believe you. If that mm -hmm. believing factor is okay, I am okay. Actually, I did with believing factors. In my initial days when I started investing, I did a couple of deals without getting any kind of pitch deck. I believed in those people. That's the reason I was shouting since last 40 minutes. <laughs> Stay tuned on team. Believe in the team. So I need to understand 
you and your team. If you are a single man person, you're looking for money. I am cool, but many investors are not feeling very comfortable. I'll tell you the reason. Please don't bang on me. Please understand it's a large market. Okay. So when you look at investors, they have their own kind of appetite of understanding. If it is a single man show, there is a risk. It may happen that something happened to you. You fall sick. It may happen that you're not there. Who will manage them? So you need a yeah. group of people who can manage the show. So I, as an investor, if you ask me this direct question, do I believe in those kind of ideas? Yes, I do. Do I mentor? Do I give time? Yes, I give time. Um, in Half Prize last, last few months back, one of the uh, participants, uh, she somehow got my number, gave me a call around, I think, nine o'clock in the night without, without, without even telling me that, shall I call you, sir? Just call directly. So I understood that there is a passion. I never, mm -hmm. never ever thought that it's not, it's not polite. It's okay. It's fine. People have their own kind of mindset. I don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't care that what he or she is thinking. She gave me a call saying that you are the only person who grilled me in like anything. And I was about to cry uh, when you are grilling me in, in Halt Prize. But sir, I think you are, you are talking sense. And that's the reason I'm giving you a call late at night after the whole event is over. What shall I do? I helped her how to start her own venture. And I wish, I wish people connect me like this. I want to see the passion. I want to know the truth. I don't need any kind of hidden agenda. I, as a person, if, if that matters to you. So I need truth. I don't need hidden agenda. So if I can get that, I'll be helpful. And the way I invest, let me, let me reveal that truth in front of all the audience. I never ever invest initially. I give them the market connect first. And this is a suggestion to all the other VC funds if they want to adopt that or maybe some other angel investors. And that's, that's one key element, okay? I have a lot of key elements. And that's the reason we will be starting an Angel Investors Academy very soon in Wallet Summit. Initially, I give the market connect. I give them a work to do, very simple work to do. If they can manage it, I will know whether they are good in operations, they are good in management skills, they are bad in somewhere, they can fail somewhere. So it's a testing phase. So before you invest money, you are sure whether this fellow will do what? Is it good, bad, ugly? We know it beforehand, before we are engaged with them. That gives a flexibility to the investor pool or investors to whether they will be comfortable with them or not comfortable with them. Sometimes it may fail. Sometimes their operation is bad. It's okay. Passion was there. Somehow they managed it. Okay. Somehow they, they, they didn't get money to run their own working capital. They were running here and there. And sometimes they come back to you and say that, sir, you give us this order, but we don't have money to run it. Like we are, we are in a you know, very bad situation. There also I help. I give them connections. Okay, talk to this general manager. Talk to this manager. And you probably can crack this. And in the back end, sometimes I write a mail to that manager that this is one of my probably uh, known uh, people. And probably you can take a look. That's all is needed. A person like me, I don't need to shout in a call, hey, give him money. No, one line of mail is more than enough to understand. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah thank you very much. So I see that you gave instructions to our audience and uh, you will not sleep at night, I guess, <laughs> because every one of our audience will call you at night because you love passion. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay. That's the reason I said that I'm a 22 into six person. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I see a lot of questions, of course, uh, but now it's the time, I guess, for giving a chance. Yeah, super job. Josh Hartnett writes that uh, this is super, super advice. Yeah. Thank you, John. Yeah, and I, I'm sure that uh, Arijit can give us uh, a lot of advice, but I guess that we will um, we will um, consider all this uh, advice in our next events. Uh, but now it's the time for presenting uh, you, uh, your business, and we have uh, one participant who uh, wants to introduce um, himself. So, 
Hold on, um, hold on. I have got a question from social media. I should answer this if you if you don't yeah, mind. Okay. I don't mind. From Malaysia, Pleasure. Maria. <laughs> if I if I may take your name properly, Maria. You are asking uh, us that uh, how can we negotiate for a better price for a fundraise? Maria, it's, it cannot be done in this short period, but that's a, that's a cue for us. Uh, I personally was going to take a session along with a couple of my, our good friends. And one of the good friend is John. He's there with us as well as Vivine. She was also there with us. I can't see her, but probably she is there. Uh, yeah, Vivine is there. So we can together, maybe in near future with a couple of others, Marco and others, we can take a workshop how to negotiate for a better price. But please understand this, it's negotiation, it's not about winning. So when you're negotiating, it should be winning for both the parties, a win-win situation. But yes, that's a clue, that's a key for us, for World Leader Summit to do a next small workshop how to negotiate. If could you please take a note? Yeah, already done. Super. Yeah. How to negotiate. Okay, thank you very much. I see uh, that our participants is very active, uh, are very active. Thank you very much for your activity. And uh, now, I guess, if you allow me, Arijit, <laughs> my dear friend, uh, we uh, can give a chance to our participants to introduce them and uh, to get your feedback. Let's, um, I guess that we can start from my uh, pitch deck. Yes, Stanislav Zubov, are you here? Can you uh, turn, turn yes, on? Hello, your... Evgenia. Hello, Rajit. Thank yes. you very much for the great presentation and very interesting advices. I'm sorry, my, my English is not so good as yours, but uh, I will try to do my best to introduce you an example of uh, a pitch deck, uh, if you don't mind. Rajit, okay? Please, so, please. Uh, uh, you know, I work as a consultant, so I help people and companies uh, to make uh, presentations and I want to check uh, one interesting thing, one case with uh, you. Can I show you uh, my presentation on the screen, Eugenia? Can I do it? Um, presentation? Yeah, to try please. Uh -huh, okay, thank you very much. So it's a kind, you know, it's a kind of uh, an example. So I want to talk about Incon. It's an incredible connection and uh, it's a new stuff for video conference when you walk. So it's like a Zoom, but a little bit better. Let's uh, talk about this. So uh, if you, I told you that we are Russian startup. We started two years ago and now we are the first Russian developer of uh, video conference stuff. Uh, now we live in a new world. We work in uh, the uh, in isolation, but we have a good uh, technologies to make our business from home. So uh, right now, something like a half of people in Russia live from their homes, and uh, a half of them sure that they will be uh, they will work the same way in the future. But and of course, in this way of communication, we use some video conference stuff. But we have some problems with the functional, with uh, the stable work, and also with security. We have some security problems. And now I want to tell you about Encon. It's a uh, new stuff for the video conference, and I want to tell why it's very comfortable, why it's stable, and also why it's so safe, and why it's a very good investment for you. So let's uh, talk a little bit what it's look like. It looks like a special application or a program for your computer uh, for you to communicate with your partners, with your business partners, and uh, also with the people you work uh, with in a company. We can do things that other video conference staff can do. We can call on the mobile phone. We can give you good quality presentation uh, and video. We also work stable with the not a great internet. We also have a special security system and you also you can use in our program uh, your CRM system and also you can um, uh, use it for teaching your personal. So uh, why it's a good investigation? Right now uh, the market of uh, video conference in Russia is rising, as you can see on this slide, but uh, we want to take something like 22% of this market. Why we can do that? Because if you will check out the next slide, we are a little better than our nearest uh, uh, partners. So uh, we are better for many points and you can see it right here. Uh, we have a business model, uh, 
which uh, how it works. Okay, you can make an application for a computer or your mobile phone. You can use it for free, uh, but you can use it for uh, money. And it, of course, you will have a little uh, more opportunities for this. So you can pay something like one hundred and twenty dollars for a month. And now we can think that. Uh, on Russian market, we can have something like six million dollars uh, per year. So uh, we need some investigations. We started a year ago. Right now, we are going to Russian market and we want to go to the whole market on uh, this year and on uh, 2023, make something like a half a billion dollar per year. Uh, also, no, we need some investigations uh, to go to the whole to the global market uh, for the marketing for all some operations and also for uh, technical development. So we want you uh, to be our co-partner. So and as uh, like an investor, you will have something like uh, forty-eight percent of the company. Now we have a great team, and uh, this team makes me sure that uh, we will. Uh, go to the our point and we'll uh, achieve our target and also right now a lot of companies use our income to solve their problems so uh, let's let me uh, tell in the end of my speech that it's a great product right now we have unique technologies uh, we have the great future and you can go into this future with us thank you very much and you can ask me some questions thank you very much Stanislav uh it uh, <laughs> it, it, uh how, it was how, a... how do i how do i pronounce his name oh it's stanislav uh, actually stanislav. indian and russian name uh -huh. stanislav. yeah beautiful Amazing. presentation thank you thank you so much for the presentation i would love to check your technicalities and your details and um, we do probably monthly four different uh, workshops so if everything goes fine let's see how you are better than others but to be very honest for the world, if you have an English version, it would have been great. So probably you can get in touch with Eve and uh, we, can, we can talk offline. I'll be more than happy to explore the possibilities. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was great. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Stanislav and uh, Rigid. So, uh, okay. Um, then it means, uh, Rigid, that in, uh, I, can see, I can't see you, Rigid. Are you here? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, okay. It's okay. Um, so, am I right that uh, for for feedback for this presentation, you need uh, this presentation in English, and you need to uh, to study more a bit. Yeah, to learn more about this. Yeah, because the 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 uh, the, the slide sh says that they're much more uh, better than others. So he did a competitive study with uh, Microsoft Team. And uh, I think one or two more competitors in the market. Mm, he was talking about security. So like security is a beautiful term if you can actually manage it properly. So uh, any, any lock can be opened uh, using any different keys. There is nothing called pure security as per my understanding. Um, I spend my uh, lot of time regarding cyber security uh, as a coder. Till date I do that. Shilpi, you want to say something or could you please Put her in the mute mode, please. Mm -hmm. Now I will take care of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for explanations, uh, I really want to see the details. And guess what? We have got Aya as uh, another um, participant. Aya, welcome to World Heritage Summit workshop. Aya is our ambassador, so we are happy to have you. So as John, so as Viv and others, Dipanita, thank you so much for joining and a couple of others. Yamandeep, thank you so much. He's our secretary general. So, Eve, over to you. Yeah, and uh, Vivian uh, also here, I see. Yes, so Eve is all, also all there. Eve yeah. is an amazing support for us. So, those who don't know, John and Eve, they run an amazing VC fund uh, based out of Ireland and UK both. And they are one of the most supporting person in entire journey of World Leader Summit. They are like our friends, close to heart, and all in for the community. Great, so yeah. great human. thank you, thank you, Arjit. Uh, um, can may I just say something? Um, yeah, I'm of course. Yes. Of course again. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Um, it is great being here. And apologies, I was a little late. I went for a walk and I met someone, and it took too long. Uh, but anyway, when like I just want to say that 
it, you know, everyone coming on here, you know, with an opportunity, it, it's fantastic and all of that. But really, I just want to pay homage to you, Arjit. You are, I have never met anybody like you. And you are so complimentary to everybody that you meet. And you're so professional. And, and this is really important that you, that you, you know, that everybody hears me say this because we're all doing things, you know, we're all doing our best. Every day we're doing our best and we try to put our best foot forward and help people um because we've been helping entrepreneurs for the last 10 years you know raise capital um but it, there, there was always a disconnect and a discord between the um the entrepreneur and the vc fund or the angel fund and it was never um i felt it was never um uh, real it was always like what is in it for me for me and it was really that's why we set up our own vc fund because we wanted to change that, um, you know, really and change it in such a big way. And we had never met anyone um, who was similar to our, our, our thought process until we had met you, Arjit. So I just want hats off to you. You are such a commendable human being and I am honoured to be uh, connected and to be your friend. Oh, Lizard, yeah. Lizard, 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 Lizard. And honestly speaking, um, I meet a lot of people in my life and uh, very few of them actually make my straight zip face with smile. And you are among them. You, John, Marco, Evgenia, Aya, I think our community manager, she is there as well. And uh, of course, our secretary general and uh, our partners, all the participants. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I think it's time for our next speech. So Eve, could you please take? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and also we have our ambassador from Russia. Yes, <laughs> yes, I forgot about you. How are you doing? Yeah. Now, Daniel, are you here? Hello, uh, I'm here. Thanks. Yeah. I just need to sit with my little daughter, so I, I can't switch on my video sometimes <laughs> because uh, you will see a little girl near me. So, but That's a I'm boon. Here. That's a boon, my friend. If you... If you have a little one who is with pure heart and she's jumping to the camera, then that's <laughs> that's one of the best things that we can do. Come on, it's a kind of family. Yeah, she's here. Oh, <laughs> hello. Oh, a beautiful flower in our event. Thank you very yeah, much. She, she's rather busy now, but uh, uh, sometimes she, she helped me to learn uh, our theme today. Yeah, we're happy to see you. Thank you that you turn on camera and show your daughter, your beautiful daughter. So, uh, Papa, it's Papa in Russia. That, that it's Papa, yeah. So now uh, our next participants uh, who want to introduce uh, on uh, business, uh, please. Uh, the floor is yours. Who, who wants to um, have a one minute uh, networking session to tell about yourself, tell about your activities? Please, uh, you can put uh, on the chat box or you can uh, turn on your mic and uh, you can introduce yourself. Do we have a, any participant who want to introduce our Maya, mic? Why don't you start your, start your mic and talk about your own venture? You started a couple of ventures. I think you can talk about it. Uh, Marco, you can probably talk about Supreme Corp if you want to talk about that. Uh, anyone else, if you wish, we have a few minutes left, so better utilize it. Hello. Hello, Aya. Hi. Hi. Yes, I'm sorry I'm in the transportation right now because my car broke down. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity and thank you for having me right now here. Uh, thank you so much, Eric, for the uh, opportunity, of course, and thank you for your kindness. Uh, well, I did actually start, I became brave enough on 2020. It was my transformational year. And I started with my main major, which was, uh, can you hear me, everyone? Is it clear? Mm. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. And I started with, uh, let's say, the first online architectural firm here in United Arab Emirates. And I started off with uh, just passion. I had to struggle a lot 
in the beginning uh, to get people to understand what's my idea and why am I making a difference in the industry? Because it's thinking about engineering and architecture that is very rigid and no one accept any changes into it. They just want an office, they want beavers. That's what they understood. Uh, well, I'm trying to make a revolution right now and which I find challenging, yet very, very, very um, beautiful. I mean, I wake up every day excited. And then I also started uh, my own uh, jewelry design company. So uh, I'll, be, I'll be launching in a couple, couple of days, actually. So I'm really also excited about that. And that's been also a passion of mine. Uh, the jewelry design company is called BU. And basically the entire collection is going to be about how to influence this feature, you know, but sometimes um, we don't know just what to do about them and how to embrace them. And uh, the, the side of our characters that we don't know how to embrace, like the contrast in our characters. So the entire collections will always have some kind of contrast in texture and so on. So yes, my journey started in 2020 and it's still ongoing. I'm still growing. And of course, uh, thank you so much again for the opportunity to let me um, introduce myself and talk about my passion. Okay. I'm doing and how I'm trying my thing here today. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you very much, Aya. We uh, had a, a bit bad connection, but we heard that you said thank you for this opportunity to introduce yourself. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, we have uh, like uh, six minutes uh, left and uh, uh, any one of us uh, have opportunity to introduce yourself as well. And uh, I guess that after that, we will uh, finish our event today. And uh, anyway, you will have opportunity in our next event because uh, business speaking event, it's a monthly event. Every month we will repeat uh, this our meeting. So you can join again and again. We will have a lot of great speakers and a lot of uh, new useful topics for you for uh, improving your business communication skills. So join us and uh, who is next? I guess that's Marco, yeah? Marco. Yeah, I just want to, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Eva. How are you? <laughs> Happy to see you. Yeah, you too. Sorry, I don't know if the light's any good here. We're just going through a pretty bad storm, weather storm in Sydney, Australia. So it was a bit difficult to uh, to hear you and uh, to get online. So, um, yeah, today was pretty rough. Uh, but just to highlight what uh, Vivian was saying, John, obviously, Arja and our VC investor funds around the world, um, you know, the team is critical, but also relationships. And um, today I had the pleasure to not really, I really didn't want to go to a meeting. It was a lunch meeting today with uh, a gentleman that flew interstate from Brisbane to Sydney. And we had um, some manufacturing of different types of beverage products that's occurring in Sydney, Australia. But uh, my co-founder, co, uh, co Dev, Dev uh, said, no, you must come. And that's the thing, like, you know, what we do, we go the extra mile as entrepreneurs and business leaders. So... You know, to get to a destination, I had to go through a pretty bad storm and I've got a young family. So you always think about your safety. Um, as business leaders, sometimes you put your safety second and uh, just being being present is very important. Okay, so in a team, you need to ensure that uh, you have business leaders that understand the value of being present, uh, understand the value of relationships and uh, respecting people in a meeting also to, to let others speak. And there's a time for people to speak and there's obviously a time for people to listen. So, um, you know, at today's uh, business luncheon, um, I, I took a back seat and I let one of our financial controllers uh, explain to uh, uh, like a company in Sydney that's a startup that are doing beverages and alcohol that have sort of uh, stopped at a level um, in their distribution in Sydney, but they would like to scale up. So we had a gentleman flying from Brisbane to Sydney and he explained the importance of team, the importance of finance, but also the importance of scaling up your business from a local presence to a global presence. So that's what Arjit was explaining a little bit, uh, well, probably about a half an hour ago, that if you do want to make a social impact or an impact across the world, 
Um, that's that's part of my um, um, really mission in life. When I did get into business five to ten years ago, was to to make a real social impact and help others achieve their goals and outcomes. So that's that's just me in in a nutshell. So thanks, Arja. Great to see you, Eve, and Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Marco. Yeah, so uh, now it's, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, now it's time to finish our beautiful event. And uh, again, uh, thank you very much uh, to our guest, Arjit. Uh, you're thank a really you. exceptional, I... exceptional person. I'm really happy to know you and to have you in uh, my life. Yeah, you can. <laughs> okay, so um, for the audience like uh, Aya, if you have any kind of product which you feel that we can market, in Walida Summit, we are coming up with a full pleasant e-commerce portal, which will open up uh, opportunities for all the our ambassadors and our members and our students or whoever is participating. If you feel that you want to grow your business with us, we are happy to help you with your uh, branding, with your PR, with your market connect, with probably enhancing your knowledge. So it's a kind of ecosystem that we have and in beautiful ecosystem, we need you to be there with us and please, please support us and love us. Love actually brings more love. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank you, Richard. So uh, I would like to add uh, something more in the, in the end. If you have any question, uh, dear participants, uh, our entrepreneurs and the leaders, you can put your comments as well on uh, our uh, World Leader Summit page uh, in, on this video. And uh, join us uh, in our next event. And uh, we will do this event. We already chose. We already chose the topic. It will be an event uh, about negotiation. So please share this information with uh, everyone, because uh, you see we have a really useful and really interesting topic. Uh, oh, I see a lot of a lot of um, and question and uh, Marco right that Arjit you mentioned animals and Marco what you want to say in the end of our meeting about animals. He is saying that he is wearing the rhino. So he is the rhino in Walida Summit. Rhino. Actually, I wanted to, to check who is me. Uh, and I, I still I still will think about this, I guess. <laughs> because you you mentioned only uh, five or six animals, right? It is animal instinct. It's not about numbers. Numbers can be any. In, in a team, you can have 100 people like this who have got mm -hmm. same similar kind of instinct. So it's about animal instinct. It's not about the name. So I can be the tiger, but it may happen that I don't have tiger instinct. So in this case, probably, mm -hmm. uh, probably Eve, you can be the tiger. You have a tiger instinct as an instinct. So the same thing can go to maybe one of our ambassador. Maybe he or she is also another tiger. It's about instinct. So you need six different animal instinct to create a great team it's not about five people it's about instincts yeah yeah that's interesting point yeah okay <laughs> it's the uh, information uh, to thinking so uh, thank you very much uh, now we already have to finish and uh, i see a lot of uh, really great uh, great comments and uh, people thank you and uh, people really uh, was enjoying of our presentation. And we also we was enjoying of uh, your participation and of presentation of Arijit. Thank you again, Arijit. Thank our participants. And uh, let's uh, see each other again in our monthly event. Uh, welcome to the next month with the topic of uh, negotiation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.